about CFO? That's another thing oh, yeah. we hear. It keeps popping up on social media. So I just wanted to just give it a little mention so that people could, if they get test results, they can kind of interpret in between. Well, not in between, but they can understand the difference between CFO yeah. testing for CFO, <laughs> CFO and breath testing. Well, it's small intestine fungal overgrowth. The F, the F stands for fungal. So it's basically yeast overgrowth, you know, or candida all, it has all these names or yeast hypersensitivity. But the concept here is uh, with CFO is saying that it's localized to the small intestine. You know, with all the stool tests uh, a lot of us practitioners do, we, we might be able to see if it's in the large intestine. But what if it's not? What if it's in the small intestine? And you mentioned testing. Um, yeast testing has always been, you know, a bear, problematic. You know, we always have to use history. And then for testing, we have stool, but that will only show the large intestine. We mm -hmm. have um, urine organic acid testing. That shows small and large intestine, but doesn't distinguish between the two. Yeah. And then we have the blood test with um, with the antigen, the immune uh, antibody antigen complex and and um, immunoglobulins. And that lets us know basically what that test is for. You could sort of say it's for yeast anywhere in the body. But really what it shows is does does that person's immune system think that it's having a problem with yeast? So that's kind of nice because that can show even if you don't have an overgrowth, uh, then that even if so, then that would just be hypersensitivity. But maybe they do have an overgrowth. Either way, that their body has decided that yeast is an issue. Now, that one other thing about that is. Um, what if they have an overgrowth and their immune system has decided not to respond? So, you know, so yeah. this is, you can see every test has its problems. You know, the, the urine um, organic acid test and the stool test are only showing one or two locations. And the other one has its issues, too. So, you know, yeast testing has always been troublesome. You know? Yeah, yeah, it is. But, it's kind of like, which one shall I choose for this person? Which one's that, you know, really the one that's going to be most beneficial to them? But um. I, I just want to say quite often with my clients, I will do, uh, if I'm sus suspicious of SIBO, I'll do a breath test, which might lead onto your urine test. But I often run a stool test at the same time. Yeah. Um, and there are some markers that you can see that are raised if somebody has SIBO, but you don't know if it's raised because somebody's got SIBO or it was part of the thing that kind of led and was kind of driving a bit of it. Um, so, for instance, we have um, we know that SIBO interferes with the way that fats are absorbed. So quite often with a stool test, you'll see super high levels of fecal fat. But that might be a completely unrelated issue that's going on that also needs addressing. So I think, you know, when you're looking at testing, I think it's being very aware that the question to ask people to ask themselves is what are you trying to find out? Mm -hmm. And if they can think about what they're trying to find out, that might help them. Because like you say, with the with the CFO, we can look for the immune function, we can look at assist, uh, the small or large, or we can look at the large intestine. So there are a lot of tests around which are super confusing for people. But it, it's, you know, in a lot of places, I, I will give people um, support to choose the right test. But there are lots and lots of places that will do that as well. And I think... But again, I don't want to go on about it, but I do like testing because I like to see what's going on because then I can treat appropriately. Yeah, so you don't guess. And this brings up a super important point about CFO and SIBO. By the way, the um, the rates of having both is about one third. It's about a third of SIBO patients you know, who have SIBO will also have the fungal overgrowth. So that's there's about a third overlap. But the, the super important point is that what the studies have shown on CIFO and SIBO is that they have the exact same symptoms. Now, I don't think that everybody, every practitioner thinks in their mind that yeast overgrowth can actually cause the exact same symptoms as SIBO and IBS. There's a few that we might have thought it would have done, but they really found exactly the same symptoms. And so why that's so important is be because your treatment is completely different, yeah. you know, yeah. for you know, one's antifungal, one's antibacterial. Now, granted, if you're using herbs, most herbs have both antifungal and antibacterial. So, okay, maybe not in that situation. But in, if you're just guessing, you know, you don't know what you're treating and what the person has. So that's where testing can be good. And by the way, the testing that they used in the CFO studies was culture. We didn't mention that. Uh, that's just not very available. It's um, culture is done th through endoscopy, so a tube through the mouth. Um, oh, okay. 
down and through the stomach into the small intestine. They sample out the fluid there and then grow it. See what grows. Does bacteria grow? Does yeast grow? And then which bacteria, which yeast? And so, so that's considered the gold standard. It's a direct test, but it's not very accessible in office practice. So that's why I didn't mention that as a standard yeast test. It's that's kind of a bit more for research purposes. The thing to keep in mind is if you do have a patient going in for endoscopy, for some reason, you can always ask for a SIBO or a CFO, like a culture, basically. You can ask for a culture. I've never done that, but I'm going to try and see what kind of response, because that would be amazing if we could get that. Yeah. So I might talk to you about that another time in more detail. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> like, good. My name is Emma Wells and I'm a nutritional therapist with over 15 years experience specialising in digestive disorders and digestive testing. I'm currently studying functional medicine having completed my digestive module last year and I am the founder of Smart Nutrition, Smart SIBO Test and IBS and SIBO Clinics.